Here's another one of my little little trick pieces here. I call it a stainless brush. It's actually scotch Bright. It's pretty simple. Let me show you it, and then I'll sit and tell you about it. Depend on how thick you make this. This is three pieces. Cut it into three even squares. You know, kind of offset it so it makes a bit of a circular pattern. Drill a hole through it. Put a nut and bolt through there with a washer. You can put this on the end of your drill and use it to kind of brighten up aluminum and stainless and, and you know, give it a bit of a, a, a satin finish. So you can run this on a drill. I won't put it in a die grinder. Depends on the diameter. If you make it a quarter inch, it'll fit in like your, your Dremel. But this is a, an eight millimeter, so it's not gonna fit in a Dremel if it's in the drill. So keep the RPMs low. If you go too fast, this thing will just explode and fray everywhere. But if you keep the RPMs low, go forwards, run for a little bit, run backwards, because it does wear and it'll kind of lose its uh, texture. But if you run it backwards and forwards, it'll keep cutting and giving it a pretty nice finish. So this is what I'm using on the transmission right now. All right, so now I've got the transmission looking good. I don't want to go crazy with it because it's like anything. It's like, where do you stop? Um, now these bolts around here i'm considering changing those just uh, maybe putting allen bolts in there's a bunch of uh, different options here i don't like putting the the hardware in there with the you know the outside piece with the different colors that's not me but i think an allen bolt in there would look better all right so the bolt that comes out uh, let's see how long that is, 40 millimeters. Yeah, it's a 40 millimeter, it's like 42, but 40 millimeter bolt. Uh, I've got an Allen bolt here just to get an idea of what it looks like. This is only 35 millimeters, so it's not gonna be right. Uh, it doesn't quite have enough thread going in there. Rule of thumb on aluminum, by the way, is the thread depth should be twice the diameter of the bolt so let's say it's an eight millimeter bolt really should go in aluminum 16 millimeters i remember that from my engineering apprenticeship but that bolt in there looks better almost looks like the head is a little small they try and put an eight millimeter washer on that and see what it looks like so it looks a little better of what that looks like on there so that looks better I'm gonna look at that much better. Let me zoom in on that and give you a clearer picture. So that versus that. Just looks a little cleaner, right? I think that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and count these. Go and order a few extras. But, uh, if this is something you're gonna do, uh, pull one bolt out at a time. You can actually see how much more that goes in there. You see that? Uh, if you're going to do it, pull one bolt out at a time and change it and put it back in. That way you're not going to worry about breaking the case loose. Uh, this is sealed. Obviously it has Honda Bond around here. If you take the whole thing apart, put it back together, you could disturb that Honda Bond and you could end up with a transmission leak. You don't want to do is leave that like half off so I can see that as a glance. And I know to change that one first. But if you do all the bolts one at a time, I don't think you're going to have an issue and it'll look a little bit cleaner. You ever see this paper that I uh, often use in videos? It's actually a masking paper, we get it from the body shop. Well, I kind of like it because then when you lay things out, do that. You can kind of see what's going on if you're working on something that you need to count or it needs to be clean. You know, you can lay stuff out like this. It just kind of gives you an idea what's going on. So, this is our bolt that we took out. So these, call them Allen bolts. The, uh, most of your suppliers are going to call them socket heads because it kind of looks like a socket. Always called them Allen bolts. So I got those, the 8mm washers. I'll torque them all afterwards. but this should look a little cleaner. So what I'll do is when I pull them all out, I'll measure them just to make sure these are obviously the same. Look, they're 40 millimeter. 
but if I find ones that are different, I'll let you know. Alright, so it might look like I'm trying to figure out if there is any swirls in this paint. You can almost see the reflection of the camera in there. Look what just came back. Look at the shine on that stuff. So the oil pan, the battery tray, the oil the brackets, and of course the engine mount. Look at that. Can you tell if this is going to get a little bit crazy? I feel like this project, Project Integra is escalating. Look at that. It's like too nice to put a battery in it. I'm going to have to relocate the battery so you can see that. Can't cover that up now. So these parts can start going on the engine. We can start looking at it. And of course now we've made these things so nice. When this goes on the engine, now what a whatever bolt I use is going to look like crap. So now we're going to end up changing the bolts to make the bolts look nice. Ah, it never ends. So there's your old pan. That is going to look fantastic on that engine. Look at that. That is beautiful. Loving it. So a little disclaimer here. This bracket is the top alternator bracket. Now, um, after I installed it, I thought about it when I got home and said, you know what, the alternator is not going to ground. So I had to shave this area here so the alternator is actually it's going to contact here with a bolt and then these two points here are going to mount to the block that's where it's going to get its ground if this the whole thing is powder coated the alternator won't get a ground which means it will charge so keep that in mind as you see we cleaned up the bolts here so back to the video you'll notice this isn't sanded and cleaned but it is now so keep that in mind When you start making things really nice is the things that looked okay now look like crap <laughs> now that old yucky alternator is going to look old compared to that so i got to figure out something to do with this i'll come back later and tell you what i did once i once i come up with a plan tease it and tell you hey I'm not gonna tell you what cams are in it until we run it on the dyno so these are Integra Type R cams everyone's gonna say why don't you put stage 2 cams or turbo cams or this guy's cams these are uh, mild cams exactly I like these they are a mild cam very good idle very good mid-range you can rev them to the moon very easy to tune very easy to dial in then the old school cam gears where you were just cam gears with bolts and not via the laptop. Very good, you don't have a whole bunch of overlap. You get good mid-range. You don't worry about cams wearing out. These are used cams and as you see, there is little to no wear on these. And again, it's easier on your valve train, easier on your timing belt. Can't say enough good things about them. They're factory OEM Honda. People have made over 700 on them, so. There was a guy with a yellow Integra Type R that made 647 back in the day. That's not too bad. No, 
and it was on the cover of Turbo Magazine. Was it? That was the cam I used. My favorite cam. I would rev the car to 10,000, 10.5, no problem. Uh, a couple of times I'd bounce off the rev limiter, which was set at 11. Had no problem. Never had a valve spring problem. No float valves. No cams breaking. Any of that fun stuff. So that's basically the detail on those cams. That's just my favorite cam. Nationally aspirated cams. There is a whole bunch of cams that do better than these. If I was shooting for high, high horsepower, obviously I could do some tuner stage twos, which were in this motor, which are a very good cam. But I wanted super OEM, quiet, nice, smooth idle. I wanted it to be close to a factory OEM car, you know, within reason. Obviously, it's, it's going to have a turbo hanging off the front, so it's not going to be exactly the same. There's going to be differences, but you get my meaning. I wanted it smooth and OEM smoothability as possible. So this is just the valve cover to keep it clean. The cams are in and the lifters are adjusted. This isn't going to be the finished valve cover but for right now. So the turbo is going to sit right here. You've seen on B-Series in the past. This piece of web in here has to be cut out because the compressor housing is actually going to sit here and it's going to go up against here. I'm hoping it's not going to touch this. Uh, sometimes they are close and depending on the outlet sometimes this tab has to be removed too but I'll find out when I put the manifold and turbo together. But for right now I want to cut this piece out of here. Now the trick to take this thing out is first is this corner you want to drill a hole you want to try and get it through this sticks out more than this so you don't want to drill on an angle because you'll drill into this so a drill back and then you're going to use a cutter to cut that webbing out people like unboxing Especially when you're so good at it. Forever. Well, there's, I can't help but there's big staples. What do you want from me? He probably did that deliberately. He did. Oh my gosh. Ooh, there's paper. Oh, I see something. Look at these. Goodies. The question is, does she know what that is? This. Especially holding it that way around here. <laughs> Hey, I'm showing the whole thing off. I know it's a blow-off valve. It's a blow-off valve. Yes, and I work here. I know that, right? Just check it. Just check it. Gives me no This credit. is how we teach. This is how we teach. Yeah. We make you feel terrible about stuff until you learn. It's good stuff. Good stuff. I won't take it all out. Boost Lab, thank you so much. This yes. is for Project Integra. He uh, messaged me and he said, hey, I'm going to send you a blow-off valve for Project Integra. There's more stuff in the box. Yes. That is unbelievable. And if there's something else that you would like installed not saying thank you so much this is a, a big thing because i don't have a blow valve for the car i have a wastegate already but not a blow valve thank you so much give boost lab some love yes. i'm not going to say this because they just sent me a free blow valve they have probably the best facility for rebuilding turbos and being able to actually run them he runs them on a machine and actually kind of tests them before he ships them out not just balancing but he actually checks to make sure they're actually doing what they're supposed to do. And I found out they are an authorized precision rebuilder, which there isn't anybody else that does that, as far as I know. Thank you. Check them out. Get them on Instagram. He posts like 10 turbos a day. Yeah. Does some beautiful stuff. Thank you so much. All right, so I forgot to mention it when I was putting these in here. I just kind of, you know, screwed them in, put some music over it to make it entertaining. <laughs> These are for a breather can. There is the plug in here, you remove that. This is off a 88 Prelude. You screw these in, it gives you a half inch hose. These are perfect for a breather can because they run right into the crankcase ventilation. Perfect. Uh, that's the bracket, told you about sanding that. This is the alternator that actually was on my Integra Type R back in the day. And this is the exact alternator pulley. So in true fashion to keep this uh, kind of the Integra build alive, we're gonna reuse this pulley, not this alternator. The alternator that came off this motor is already out, again, rebuilt and cleaned up. Wanna rebuild it just to make sure it's right. But we are gonna reuse this pulley. It was on the Integra Type R that was on the cover of Turbo Magazine. So we're kind of keeping some of the old nostalgic parts alive. And of course, a new oil filter 
this plugs up the oil separator that was on the motor. This is a freeze plug. Uh, that is the part number. It fits in there pretty tight, but of course, a good smear of Honda Bond around there. Push it in until it's level. That thing is good to go. Also, you will need to cap that. That's a 1 8 pipe plug. Again, Honda Bond around there. There we go. We have now a breather. That is for the knock sensor, which we put on at the end because on a knock sensor, if you look at it and shout at it, it will break. All right, so I just picked up the starter and alternator from Wills. These guys, if you're local, check them out. They not only rebuild them, I asked them to make them look pretty, and they did. They took it apart, bead blasted it, repainted the case, repainted it. It looks terrific. Look at that. Absolutely like brand new. I mean, even the pulley, they redid the pulley. I'm going to change that and put the AEM underdrive pulley on there, like I mentioned, but look how good that looks, even the shield they painted it a different color and it gives it some contrast that's exactly what I was looking for nice huh what do you think again this could get this could escalate <laughs> I think it already is but that's something that I wanted to do now the block looks good the brackets look good of course I wanted to rebuild this because uh, it was the original alternator with 134,000 miles on it. It said it was actually in good shape. It just needed uh, a few parts. I think it will put bearings in it and brushes and, and obviously, I don't know, whatever else they do. But it said it was just brushes and bearings. It probably was something else too. And same with the starter. But now they're looking pretty spiffing. I can put those on and start finishing the block up. pieces just showed up this is the bellows for the downpipe I'm gonna build a new three inch downpipe out of stainless so this is much better than the regular flex style it's called a bellows you see it's designed for the air to travel that way but it allows a little bit of spring in there so it'll allow for flex so you can mount the downpipe to the engine put a flange on here and as the exhaust and everything moves that takes up that slack too and also Got the one for the dump tube, which uh, is going to be somewhere up front. This is going to be raw stainless, so it should look kind of cool. And then the exhaust, I don't know what the plans are. It might be stainless, it might get ceramic coated black, I don't know yet. Even the downpipe might get ceramic coated black stuff. But more cool stuff showing up every day, it's like something new. So I want to talk to you about drain lines for a second. This is the turbo that Boost Lab built for us. This is based on his own design. Obviously it's got castings made by other companies. It's probably uh, somewhat standard casting. So this is going to be a normal look if you start looking at your turbo or one that you own. This over here is the drain. So the way a turbo system works, this is a journal bearing so it relies on high pressure oil. Now, Honda applications, they tend to run uh, pretty high oil pressure, about 30, 35 on idle, 100 PSI on the full throttle. So you have 100 PSI coming in the turbo, you need to drain the oil out. This is the drain. This is gravity fed. So basically, it means your oil just runs out of here, back into the oil pan. So you don't want any restrictions in your oil system. So this is typically the flange that you will see. You can buy these online. It bolts to the turbo. Actually, this one doesn't line up. This is for a GT turbo. The, the flange is actually smaller. You see the ball pattern is a little bit different. This is an SC turbo. This is for a GT, which is a ball bearing. But just to give you an idea, you see the size of the opening here, and then the size of the opening here. It's actually smaller, which means it's going to have a restriction, which means the oil is going to somewhat back up in here before it drains out of here. 
So this is a dash 10, it's a pretty common size for your drain. But you want the oil to come through here as smooth as possible. You don't want it to back up. So let me show you the difference in the Boost Lab fit in here. This is the one that they sell. It's got their name on it, but it's more than that. They've actually done some design and put some thought into this. Let me show you the difference. Not only is it matched to the shape of the turbo, you can see it's actually tapered, which means obviously this is the size of a Dash 10. We're not really gonna change that. There's not a lot we can do here. But this is almost like increasing the flow, making it more of a gradual transition. So this is the gasket that they have for their flange. You see that size right there. You can see the shape well, if you look at this, this is more of a conventional. You can see the difference there. You can see actually how much overhang there is, which you've got to think of oil flowing down here. Oil is obviously going to flow pretty well, but it's going to back up in here. It's going to hit this almost like a step and it isn't going to flow as efficiently, which uh, can make it bypass the turbo, which means you're going to get oil in the turbo. You're going to get smoke in. It could bypass into the exhaust side. It could go into the compressor side, hence smoking. So that is something that, unless somebody actually shows you the difference, you don't think about it. You order this online, you go, hey, it's a nice looking flange, it's all one piece, great, put it on the car. Bob's your uncle, fire it up, let's go. Look at the difference. Are you glad I showed you that now? Check these guys out, Boost Lab. I don't think this is that expensive. This I buy online for, I think, about 20 bucks. I used to buy a lot of these until Boost Lab brought this to my attention. They said, hey, there is a better system. I don't remember how much it is, but it's pretty cheap, especially when it comes to your turbo. You don't want to bypass oil, so check these guys out. Get a hold of him. So you saw on LHT, let him know that I'm helping him market. <laughs> I'm actually just sharing what I believe in, so hopefully that comes across on camera. So that's the one we will be putting on our nice new Boost Lab Turbo. See this right here? Beautiful, huh? Good stuff.